Hello, this is Preheat, and today we have a very anticipated video. I've been, uh, I've, I've gotten a lot of requests about covering this. Um, and I was actually playing it the other night on stream. It's a World Vein kindling build. Uh, so what we're going to be talking about is uh, how this build differs from, you know, the, the standard boilerplate, you know, Lucid Dream fire build uh, that you've probably been playing this whole tier. Uh, we're going to talk about how uh, different it is than that current build, where its strengths are, the pros and cons. Um, I really do think that this build is not necessarily better or worse than Lucid. It's just different is the main thing. Uh, and we're going to talk about how it's different and the use cases for it since, you know, different encounters actually have uh, things that line up and make this build work better for it. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So um, just, you know, to start things off, I think uh, it's important to give you an idea of what you should actually put your character uh, as in terms of your, your traits uh, and your Azurite essences as well. So, um, so yeah, obviously if you're going to this build, uh, you're gonna have combustion timings that are around one minute. Uh, so something like World Vane is actually a very strong CD. Uh, this is something that uh, I think was actually theorized in uh, the Mage Theorycraft Discord, like before the patch even hit, whenever they were talking about World Vane and how it was getting changed, uh, it's it's a very strong one minute cooldown. Um, so we're going to be taking World Vane up. now. In addition to that, of course, we want Vision so that we can reduce our cooldown on combustion. The goal is to hit one minute combustions, right? Uh, anything less than a minute, not too useful for us, right? Because we aren't going to be running Spark of Inspiration, so we're not going to reduce our World Vane uh, cooldown. We just want to have one minute. Right, anything over one minute is a waste, uh, but up until one minute is is what we want, right? So if we miss one minute, it's bad. And uh, if we go under it, it's kind of a waste too, right? One minute's what you shoot for. In addition to that, we also uh, want to be running our Lucid Dreams. That's because we don't have this as a major, right? So uh, we need a way to get Fire Blasts back, right? Um, and Lucid Dreams does give us those procs. It nets us a, a crap ton of Fire Blast procs throughout the fight. Uh, it's just all around a really, really solid uh passive to take here um and then breath of the dying is just i mean it's it's just really good right it's it's hard to say no to this damage um especially in execute i mean it's just just a really good trait and uh definitely recommend having at least one trait that has corruption resistance increase so the only really really the only thing you can kind of sub this out for if you wanted to is i guess if you had like a, a lot of cdr from maybe like ineffable truth or something possibly go spark of inspiration um but more than likely formless void would be the way to go um i really do think you're going to stick with breath of the dying though at least from what i've seen it seems like breath of the dying is the way to go here um and then as far as the talents go obviously we're going kindling we want to reduce our combustion time down to a minute uh this is going to help achieve that uh and then everything else here is pretty standard you're still going to be running rune of power uh you're still going to be still going to be running flame on uh the only one that's a little bit tricky i think is searing touch because uh, Searing Touch isn't exactly conducive to kindling, especially if you're doing a lot of Scorch executing, right? Because uh, if you read here, kindling does not include Scorch crits, okay? So if you're not casting Fireball anymore, uh, this actually loses a little value. But then again, Searing Touch is really strong in this rate here, right? Like Carapace, Nizoth, there's always something to Scorch execute. So I'm still taking it. I'm a little iffy on it. I tried out a little Pyromaniac. I tried out a little Firestarter. Honestly, these two weren't doing it for me. Uh, Pyromaniac is just, it's not reliable enough, but just from like the look and feel perspective of feely crafting it out in the raid, uh, I think Searing Touch is, is the winner here. Um, and of course, if you're doing AOE on a fight like Hive Mind or something like that, you're gonna probably want Living Bomb instead. Okay, so uh, now that we've talked about uh, what talents and traits you're gonna be taking, uh, let's talk about how this build actually plays. So, uh, my character, whenever I play this build, I actually use a pretty similar setup to what I do with the normal build with Lucid. Uh, that is double on use with my bracers. Now, having more combustions means that less of your burst is happening during like your big combust, right? Your two minute combust. Uh, you still have a big combust because of these trinkets and because of the bracers, but um, it's not as strong, right? So this definitely loses value, right? Like having stuff that, uh, that isn't a one minute CD if you're big cooldown is one minute right it's not gonna it's not gonna be all that great um so i think that there is actually room for replacing your bracers if you don't uh if you don't have you know hyper thread bracers maybe this will be better for you right 
Um, I still stick with them because I like having that really strong two minute combustion. It lines up really well with a lot of mechanics that, that involve like AOE, like cleaving and, and stuff like that. So I like to keep the bracers. Um, but I don't think it's as necessary, especially if you have like a mastery corruption bracer and you don't really have mastery corruption uh, or masterful in any other slot. Um, it, it might be viable to, to switch this out. But uh, as far as the trinkets go, I am running double on use. Uh, now, the Manifesto of Madness, this this actually can be swapped out for the badge. It's kind of encounter specific, right? It depends on how stacked you are with other people because uh, if you're using the Manifesto of Madness correctly, you're actually cancel oring the chapter one of it, right? So we cancel aura chapter one. We do not want the crit. What we want is the versatility, right? So if you cancel aura it, basically you just instantly get versatility based on how many allies you have around you, right? Uh, what this means is that if you don't have a bunch of allies around you, then tough luck. So you can get trolled if you use this. That's why I say like it's kind of encounter specific. Uh, but I do think that overall having the versatility is uh, is a little bit better just because we have so much intellect already, right? Like we've got World Vane, we've got the Fawn of Power, we, maybe we have a Cloak Proc. Um, there's a lot of intellect going into our character, right? Like our int is extremely high with all these buffs up. Uh, and versatility has the ability to kind of like multiply that. Whereas if you just add more int, you're not really getting like that same scaling factor. All right, so let's talk about how you actually play this build. So uh, as you might guess, there is quite a bit of RNG with this because we don't actually have the lucid dreams uh, that kind of smooths out our RNG on having like all the fire blasts we need for combustion, right? Uh, you can still have a combustion without having to cast scorch. It's just a lot less common. And uh, honestly, you have to be kind of lucky for it to happen. So um, starting off on this build, uh, I definitely recommend going into your combustion only using one fire blast. If you go into it with only one available, it's going to be pretty cringe for you. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and give it a try here. Now, the target is going to go execute pretty much right away. Uh, I will not be scorching. Um, and as for good reason, I'm going to be using fireball just so I can show you like how the cooldowns would line up normally, right? If the target was like a real boss or something like that. Uh, you know, realistically, you would scorch, right? You would scorch. But the problem with scorching is that if we only scorch like the whole time we're hitting a target, uh, then our kindling is going to be thrown out of whack and the cooldowns aren't going to line up, right? So there's a, there's a downside to kindling with this build uh, because kindling and the scorch execute, they don't play well together, right? Uh, which is fine, right? Like it's fine if you're killing the boss, right? Because you aren't scorching the whole fight usually. Uh, but in this case, since it's a target dummy, it's going to basically be scorch range instantly, right? So I'm just going to pretend like that's not the case. I'm just going to pretend like it's full HP. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and get started here. And uh, hopefully we have good RNG. Going to go and charge up at here at 18. As we do. And uh, RNGs just take the wheel. Hopefully we get the procs that we need to make this not a cringe combustion. <laughs> Someone's jumping along here with me. Uh, so as you can see here, um, there's there's four. Well, I've got five now. There's like five World Vanes down, right, for me. Um, you only drop three, though. Whenever you use World Vein as like a major, and then you drop those little bad boys, right, you only end up dropping three of them. Oh, a little lag there. I'm getting a little latency in the world right now. This is not good. As you can see, my bar is getting a little red there. Anyways, yeah, so... If you're playing this build and you know someone else is playing World Vane, uh, definitely become buddies with them, right? So now that my combustion is like ahead of my World Vane, I'm actually going to scorch a little bit because it's uh, it's less important, right? Like like I was mentioning before, it's really important that you have this stuff lined up so it's all on like the minute mark. Uh, but aside from that, it's uh, not as important. And what's great is I have a cloak proc here, right? So we're going to go into another combust and this is going to be a super cringe combust. I'm just going to let you guys know this right now. It's going to be super fucking cringe, but that's fine. Right, so obviously not the best combust there. That's fine. Uh, and in this one, I'm just going to Scorch, right? I'm going to Scorch Pyroblast just to show you guys how off this timer is going to be. So um, RNG could, could factor this in, right? Like it could definitely affect this. But if I just Scorch, you're going to notice that my combustion in my World Vein, it's, it's not quite keeping up, right? It's not catching up to where it needs to be. This is what, what I meant whenever I said there was a downside. 
And I am going to charge up here. I'm going to go back to just playing normally with Fireball because uh, we, we need to get we need to get our combustion off cooldown pronto, right? So hopefully we get a couple Fireball crits in here. Clock's ticking. Ended up working out okay. All right, and that's it. So that's where we'll end it. Um, I just want to show you guys like what it would look like all the way up until the next combustion. Now, obviously my berserking is coming up again. I have another rune of power. Basically, I would want to chain this, right? So uh, if I use my second int pot there, uh, which I did, I would definitely want to instantly chain another rune of power so that I get the most out of my int uh, pot. So if you don't lust on the pole, you would actually wait until whenever the lust is usually to try and use that pot and uh, in two of your runes. Uh, so what I've done here is I've kind of just diagrammed out like what a like a fight that would be a little bit over eight minutes would look like typically, right? So this is with your normal lucid setup. Uh, and we do have the pre-pot here on the pole. Maybe we have another potion, uh, let's say like here at the end, right? Um, but you know, you should be pretty, pretty used to kind of how this flows, right? And like your rune of power usage throughout and how you're gonna wanna have like two runes for whenever you use your second pot, that sort of thing, or whenever lust comes up, right? Uh, but anyways, so how it differs is if we actually take this out and we add the kindling, um, it's essentially the same thing. It's just that you're getting a, a strong combust every two minutes, right? But there's a, a, an additional weak combust in between, right? So like these combusts right here, this one, this one, this one, this one, these are all weaker combust. We'll actually scale those down so that they aren't as visible there. Um, yeah. So uh, the damage profile on it is different, not necessarily better. Uh, the main thing is just that you're getting more burst in between, right? So like if we were to draw out like what mage, uh, like damage normally looks like, right? Like on a scale, uh, like if you look at Warcraft logs or something like that, uh, single target, right? Um, you're going to see uh, pretty much across the board, it's going to be kind of like this, right? So on the pull, you're going to spike and then you're going to go down. And then you're going to, you know, maybe where the power happens, whatever. And then at two minutes, you're going to spike again, go down, right? And this is kind of like how the trend for mage kind of works, right? I'm, I'm exaggerating it just for the effect, right? Just to like prove a point. But um, usually this is kind of what it's going to look like, right? And maybe if you have like a, like lust here, right? Like you have another big spike or whatever. Um, but I mean, it usually lines up where like almost all of your damage is happening in these two minute intervals, right? Well, what if there's a situation where uh, there's like ads that spawn, right? So like, let's say that 10 ads spawn here and then 10 ads spawn here and then 10 ads spawn here and then zero ads spawn for the rest of the fight, right? Like this is pretty, um, this, this isn't really representing any fight that's out right now, but it could be a realistic scenario, right? Like let's say there's a phase one where ads keep spawning and then that just stops happening, right? Um, well, in this case, uh, you know, you have your big burst, right? With the 10 ads, you're going to be feeling real good, right? Uh, and then you have another little spike, right? Because you get to cleave the ads here. Uh, so whereas if you, if you didn't have this build, right? Like if you were just going for like Lucid, uh, you may not get to capitalize as much as on, on this AoE here, right? That occurs maybe one minute in. So basically, uh, the gist of it is, right? Like the bottom line is, if there's AoE that occurs every one minute or so, um, this is actually pretty useful to you, right? Like, especially if you end up getting to capitalize on that more than maybe other mages who are running only Lucid. Um, good example of this would be Carapace. So if we go over to, let's let's just pull up a Carapace log here. So here's, so Fired Up actually played this build in this log. So we're gonna look at him. Um, so yeah, uh, you can see here that uh, there are some nice little spikes of damage. Uh, you know, the damage is definitely not just like linear. Uh, there's there's very, very high highs and uh, mostly low lows. Uh, if we go over here to buffs and we look at his combustions and then line those up, you can see that, uh, you know, with these combustions here, 30 seconds, one minute, 30 seconds, uh, we're really making the most out of these first two, right? Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Mythic Carapace, but generally speaking, in this fight, you're going to have the... Uh, the hemorrhages come down twice so those are like the big tentacles that slam there's one at, at 30 minutes into the fight and then there's another one at one minute 30 seconds and then the boss transitions into the second phase 
Um, so as you can see here, like with this build, Fired Up was able to really um, capitalize on these on this damage here, right? So like this one, normally you have to have mages choose like one or the other, right? Um, but with this build, you're actually able to use this on on both of them, which is really useful. So I think Carapace is actually a very good fight for this. Uh, another fight that's really good to look at, um, although it's not it's not like an overall damage thing, it's more of just like killing the boss really easily, uh, is Drestagath. So if we look at Drestagath here, and we look at like one minute CD on combustion, um, you know, this actually ends up lining up, I'm not sure what he did on this fight, but it ends up lining up pretty well with the debuff uh, because you're actually able to uh, get that debuff where you can like damage the boss, right? Um, and it, it ends up being like pretty nice for lining up with uh, here it is with lining up with combustion right since it's about a minute so what ends up happening is basically you're able to like pump the boss right um so yeah any fight where you have uh stuff that lines up on like a one minute timer for aoe uh stuff that you need to just have burst on every minute or so um if you have two minutes right it's a little awkward you have to go every other one but with this build you're able to capitalize on all of them uh which just means that you have you know higher damage potential in those windows. Yeah, just kind of in summary, I guess, uh, the best way to describe like the pros of this build is just that you have a different damage profile than you would normally if you were playing like the normal build. Um, you know, your damage is more distributed across like one minute timers as opposed to two minute timers, which just means that you're able to capitalize more. If your raid group has like a lot of strong two minute people, right, and everyone is like slam in the ads every two minutes every single time they spawn let's say that it's like carapace right uh one minute or sorry 30 seconds into the fight first set of ads spawn everyone just blows the f out of them right all the mages they go crazy they just kill all of them uh and then one minute 30 seconds comes around right in this group if all the mages are lucid basically there's no damage happening right uh there's just gonna be like demon hunters with their uh with their eye beams uh, there might be, you know, a red or something that saved their cooldowns, right? Uh, but the main thing is just that you don't really have that consistent damage if everyone's two minute. But if you have one mage running World Vein instead with Kindling, then you can kind of uh, take that damage profile and you can spread it out. You can diversify a little bit. It's almost like you're hedging your DPS, right? So that um, in those situations where if you need that damage and you don't really have it, at least it's still covered, right? And especially if there is no real AoE happening, since AoE is a zero-sum game, right? It's just whoever gets the pie of the ads gets the damage. Uh, you can capitalize more on it if you're using this build. If you have any questions, uh, I do stream um, most weekdays and also on the weekend. It's going to be usually after 5 p.m. is when I stream. Uh, so come by my stream, twitch.tv slash preheat, um, E-A-T, and uh, I, I can give you some tips. Also, uh, Please, if you like this YouTube video, uh, I, I really do uh, appreciate when people subscribe and like the videos just because uh, there is another person with a very similar name uh, and it does kind of ruin my SEO when it comes to my videos. Um, so if you like the video and you want to give some support, uh, definitely give that like, give that subscription uh, to, to the YouTube channel um, and uh, leave a comment as well if you have any questions. All right, so hopefully that does it. Uh, yeah. Uh, We'll talk about this more. I'm, I'm going to be using this build probably for the next couple weeks. So there might be new things I learned, right? Like I'm still pretty, pretty new to like how this whole build plays out. Um, but I do think that there's a lot of potential here uh, and I'm enjoying it, right? I, th I think it's fun to get like a little break from lucid dreams. Um, so hopefully you find it fun too. Anyways, thanks for watching the video. We'll see you next time.